is much more than a source of currency for the world at large and gives value to various pieces of currency, but it's also something that's used as a building material and is a good conductor of things. Gold is often seen as one entity, but its true nature and ability is something that many don't appreciate because they don't fully know it. As a result, here now are 20 things you don't know about gold. Number 20. How to Make Gold Bars One of the most popular visuals when it comes to the gold is that of gold bars. Most people like to picture Fort Knox or a bank vault that's just stacked full of gold from end to end, and that's the stuff of dreams and what they're made of after all. But what sometimes people don't get or understand is that gold isn't found in bars or anything close to it for that matter. Getting it to where it needs to be in bar shape is actually a very long and meticulous process that takes quite a while. While we don't do a full step by step guide here, as there are experts for that, we will mention the broad strokes. This is how the world's most expensive gold bars are made. For example, the first thing you need to do is to get the gold out of the ground. It's not as easy as you would expect, and while some people have found surface gold over the years, that is the exception and not the rule. What's more, most times you'll find gold in its powdery form, much like on the show Gold Rush, which will be referenced a lot in this video. This is known as fine gold due to its very small size. And once you get enough of that fine gold, it then goes through a chemical process to get rid of any impurities that it may have. After all, gold is in the ground, and the ground can affect the gold. Eventually, the gold will turn into a molten form to further purify it, and only after that is it poured into a mold that leaves you with a gold bar. So yes, it takes quite a while to get that gold bar, but if you do it right, you've got a perfect piece of gold that every miner wants. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. A Global Material Depending on where you are in the world, the words gold rush will mean different things to different people, mainly because the history of the world is literally littered with people finding gold in certain areas and beginning rushes to go and get them, hence the term gold rush. But if you were to ask people where gold actually is in the world, they might hesitate to say places outside of the United States, mainly because it's within the United States that some of the more famous gold rushes have been had, including the one that helped to colonize the West in the mid-1800s. Obviously, though, gold is elsewhere in the world, and it's been proven many times over. Even if you just want to go before the United States was made, gold would be found in various nations and was a hallmark of various empires and religious sects. That's why certain artifacts that are found have gold imbued in them, because they found it in the ground and molded it into that. Fast forward to today, and there are many gold rushes and industries going on right now that are constantly growing. The show Gold Rush, for example, over the course of its 10 plus year history on the air, has shown gold in the United States, Canada, Guyana, South America, Papua New Guinea, Australia, and even most recently, New Zealand. They even noted that Australia has some of the purest gold in all of the world, and that New Zealand has some of the largest and most creative wash plants, which are used to get the gold out of the ground. Gold is all over the place if you know where to look, and yes, we've mined a lot of it out of the ground, but all it takes is one big find, and the new gold rush will be upon us. Number 18. How much gold has been found? That's a fascinating question that really puts a perspective on how much we've found. In fact, about 244,000 metric tons of gold has been discovered up to a certain date, 187,000 metric tons historically produced, plus current underground reserves of 57,000 metric tons. Most of that gold has come from just three countries, being China, Australia, and South Africa. The United States? Well, it actually ranks fourth in gold production in 2016. To be absolutely clear, though, we aren't sure how accurate this is due to the fact that gold is being mined all the time and thus there's arguably much more to add to the pile if you will. Plus, the source that was found for this didn't actually have a date on its website creation and another form 
2022 actually had a lower amount than the one that was listed, but again, everything's finicky, and at this point, I've absolutely confused both you and myself. The question becomes, what have we used all that gold for? Well, after being found, bought, sold, and so on, a lot of it's used to make jewelry, believe it or not. Gold does show that you care, especially if it's in the form of an earring or a wedding band. A lot of it is made into gold bars and coins and then put into reserves, like mentioned before, and that helps to maintain the value of certain currency and is often exchanged between nations in order to pay off debts to one another. Then there are other purposes, like being used for certain technologies due to its properties and so on and so forth. While I can't truly answer how much this gold is in certain terms, one estimate pointed out that all the gold in the world could fill up two Olympic-sized swimming pools, and that's a pool that even Scrooge McDuck would be jealous of. Number 17. A Noble Material no doubt many of you have noticed a certain problem with currencies of the world as a whole, mainly in that they only have value because we give them the value as a whole. I say they're worth something, and thus they are. It's part of the reason why gold bars are held in reserve and such, so that there is a stability to what we can do with making our currency. Of course, the problem with that is the very simple fact that why do we feel that gold is worth anything? After all, if paper money isn't actually worth anything, why should a rock in the ground be any better? It is a very good question indeed, and one that I can honestly answer for you. The answer is that gold is a very special kind of metal in the overall, and it's one of several that's known as a noble metal. Very basically, gold is stable in the key ways that matter. Yes, you can shape it and mold it when the right conditions are there, but generally it's something that does not corrode or even evaporate or wither away over time. Gold lasts, and there are other materials that do that as as well to be clear, which includes that of silver, copper, and platinum, which is why we value them as well. The other reason we know gold is valuable in certain ways is that it's a metal that we know is rare, rare enough to be treasured and put at a high price per ounce, not per pound. These factors and a few more that have to do with its noble nature ensures people all around the world that this is indeed a metal that we should pay attention to and look out for. You could say that it's a material that's golden. Number 16. Earthquakes can create gold. If there's one thing that a lot of people would wish for, it would be gold, specifically for more gold to be out there so that they could get some for themselves and thus be rich. But to counter that, if gold was everywhere in the world, it wouldn't be worth as much and thus wouldn't be as valuable as a material as others. Duck tails for the win once again. Anyways, there is without a doubt a finite amount of gold in the world, but there are occasions where apparently it can actually be created through a special event. As one study seems to want to make people People believe it could happen through an earthquake. Water in faults vaporizes during an earthquake, depositing gold, according to a model that was put out there in 2013. And to be clear, this isn't just a random theory. There have long been thoughts about how gold gets so deep into the ground over time outside of glacier movement. Various scientists have felt that earthquakes creating pressure could cause certain reactions to happen if done the right way. But to truly make gold from it, well, that still seems a bit out there, does it not? After all, there would have to be all of the right materials materials in the right place at the right time just in order to get the right result. And as such, you couldn't truly rely on just any old earthquake to get the job done. It would have to be one in a very specific place. It's still very much a theory, as they say, but that just goes to show how far people will go in order to figure out how to get more gold. And don't even get me started on alchemy. Number 15. 24 Carat Issues as I noted earlier, gold comes in varying levels of purity, a reference to how good the gold is itself and how it's been affected by the environment as a whole. You likely have heard of its two measurements via 10 carat and 24 carat. 24 carat gold is indeed the highest purity of the material and is in fact the most pure version of gold out there right now. Just to be clear though, 10 carat gold is equally as fine and is used and mined out all the time, but the 24 carat version is the most special and the 
most problematic as well. You see, in its 24K form, the gold is malleable to an almost insane degree. I've already talked about how gold bars are made, but with 24 karat gold, they like to make gold sheets that are so thin that if you were to make it an inch high layer of sheets, it would be comprised of 200,000 sheets. Now, while you might think that malleableness is all that great, if you wanted to use that gold to make jewelry, it would be way too soft to do so. Well, perhaps not, but it would be at risk of deforming both in the process of making it and in terms of long use. As such, anyone who wants to make such a shaped item has to use anything from 10K to 22K gold, but as for the 24 karat, that's the kind that you want to get if you were to use it to make investments, as in you wanted to store gold and then sell it when the price was right. These small nuances make all the difference when it comes to both finding and making things with gold. Number 14. Gold Making Bacteria as I've already shown you, some people are willing to go to insane lengths in order to make gold, but some are a bit more scientific and plausible than others. Such as when in 2012 it was found that a bacteria can make gold out of another material in the precious metal that we all know is 24 karat gold. And before you go to try and find the two items that make this process and then try to have it happen to you, you do need to remember a few key things. First, this is a bacteria making gold out of a toxic substance. It's not making gold bars, it's merely turning the gold chloride into solid gold. It's very cool, but it also means that it happens in small doses. Secondly, while you can get gold chloride, it's not exactly the cheapest thing out there. Yes, they're doing a wondrous kind of science, but there's a reason you're not hearing of bacteria mining 10 years later. Number 13. Gold Metals one of the reasons that people are so attracted to gold isn't just because of its value, but also its importance in society as a symbol of wealth and victory. The best example of this is that of the gold medals that men and women win at the Olympics every time they come around. Bronze for third place, second gets silver, and if you make it to the top of the podium, you get a nice shiny gold medal. But what are these gold medals exactly? Are they 100% gold or even close to it? Well, actually no, and they've not been for quite a long time. Olympic gold medals contain only about 1.34% of gold, with the rest composed of sterling silver. Ouch, right? Oh, and you know when you see Olympians biting down on the gold? That's because they're doing a test to see if it's pure. However, it's not, so please save your teeth. But why aren't the gold medals pure gold? Well, two reasons mostly, value and rarity. Originally, they were made of pure gold, but after 1912, they would be switched out due to shortages that were caused by the wars to come. Fast forward to now, and it honestly would be a bit wasteful to use gold for every gold medal because there are a lot of them that are given out these days. But before you feel bad for the Olympians, there are a lot of perks to winning gold medals, mainly in that their countries usually reward them for winning them, including getting actual gold, which means gold bars in Malaysia, or getting a cash payment of anything from $25,000 all the way up to $250,000. So yeah, even though it's sterling silver, they're still doing fine. Number 12. The Nobel Peace Prize in kind of a counterpoint to what we just talked about, a prize that is indeed made of gold is that of the Nobel Peace Prize. Before 1980, the Nobel Prize medal was made from 23 karat gold. Newer Nobel Prize medals are now made from 18 karat green gold plated with 24 karat gold. Green gold, also known as electrum, is an alloy of gold and silver with trace amounts of copper. So it is gold, but just not the purest kind that many would likely think. But then again, it's clearly more gold than that of the Olympic medals, so why is that the case? Well, while we're only speculating here, I could say that it's because of how the Nobel Peace Prize isn't given out to many people. It's meant to be an award that truly goes above and beyond in terms of what it's meant for. The people who win it are those who have truly helped the world in a grand way, whether it be through diplomacy, technology, humanitarianism, and so on and so forth. So perhaps, by using this green gold, it further cements that they are worthy winners, and thus they deserve a prize that showcases the value of the award. Again, it's all speculation, but it is a prestigious award, and not just anybody wins, so it would make sense. Number 11. Gold Discoloration 
Since we've already talked about green gold, we'll now speak about gold actually changing colors if you have the right things on hand. Pure gold is a tarnish resistant metal, so it will not discolor. This is because gold has a low reactivity rating, and in chemistry, reactivity describes how likely an element is to lose electrons and form positive ions. The more likely this is to happen, the more reactive an element is. This is also part of the noble metal thing that we were talking about from earlier, thus upping its value. But there's a rub to this, isn't there? Because as noted, it's pure gold that doesn't discolor. But not everything is pure gold, remember? Including the stuff that's put into jewelry, that's actually gold alloy. There are multiple processes that can be used to help turn gold into the various materials and items that many want it forged into. These processes can be what leads to being discolored over time, because it's the other alloys that it's merged with that turn, and thus make it turn. Or the process of something like gold plating can alter it over time. So if you're looking at two pieces of gold and one is the right color and the other isn't, well, you can now immediately know which is the pure one and which is not. You know, in case someone tries to hoodwink you on something. The more you know, right? Number 10. Gold Impurities in case you're still curious about how gold is impure versus pure all the time, I'll break that down for you a little bit more. Gold comes from various processes that occur in the earth or in earthquakes apparently, and there are massive veins that are born from this that are put all over the world. But the ground beneath our feet isn't made of one thing or another, it's a menagerie. So oftentimes the gold material that's formed is mixed with other materials that happen to be around. For example, I talked about 10 karat gold before, that's a reference to how it's a 10 parts gold plus 14 parts something else. That something else, well that's other materials that it was merged with, and the way to get those impurities out is through intense heat in the process that is used to make gold bars. Number 9. Gold Rush I've talked about it loosely, but now we'll discuss the show Gold Rush at great length because it's had a big impact on the world's perception of gold and gold mining. It began with a group of men known as the Hoffman Crew who went to Alaska to try and find gold to save their families during an economic downturn in the United States. Fast forward to now, and it's not only one of the premier shows on the Discovery Channel, but it's had multiple spin-offs created that showcase the various kinds of gold mining, including whitewater dredging and more. The show has shown millions of dollars worth of gold being found and many people having gold fever if you will because of it and it's honestly a really good watch so don't be afraid to check it out number eight ancient gold as noted earlier, gold has been used by ancient civilizations all over the world and is found in many of the artifacts that we can discover in their old stomping grounds. The oldest gold in the world ever found was said to have belonged to the Varna civilization, one that was nearly lost to time, and yet they had gold working going on all the way back to 4600 BC. That would make it one of the first metals that humans have ever worked into a kind of art form or material. Some even believe that it was the first material that man ever worked over iron, which would be quite a thing in and of itself. Now sure, we arguably use gold better in today's cultures, but the fact that ancient people knew how to use it just as well in some cases, well, that's pretty special indeed. Number 7. Tio Quetlati. Here's one that's kind of gross and really hard to pronounce and I probably screwed it up, but it also goes to show how naming something is oftentimes not an art form, it's just a reference to what you think something is at the time. You see, in the Aztec culture, the word that gold is translated from is this hard to pronounce name. And what does that hard to pronounce name mean? Well, it means excrement from the gods. That's right, they literally named it as crap that the gods gave out. What a world! But there's a reason for this madness, I assure you. They were apparently first exposed to gold when it seeped out of the ground, and the process was compared to diarrhea. So gold, well, that was a gift from the sun god, and silver was a gift from the moon god. Sometimes you just have to look at things and people and believe that there's no other way to look at it. Number 6. Can you destroy gold? As it stands, it's not actually possible to destroy gold on a molecular level with any naturally occurring substance on Earth. 
Pure gold is virtually indestructible. It won't corrode, rust, or tarnish, and fire can't destroy it either. Again, it's a noble metal, which is why so many people value it as a whole. There have even been tests to showcase a gold bar being melted and reformed as a bar, and to all who witnessed it and monitored it, it's not a single drop of gold that was gone, no matter how many times they did the process. The only caveat to this is that gold can be dissolved, but this is, in and of itself, destroying the gold. Rather, you're just going and turning it into gold particles that can be dispersed into the air, so the gold is there, you're just not seeing it. This is different from, say, wood, where you're burning it and the wood is no more afterwards. It's broken down into its various elements, and you just can't do that with gold. Number 5. Rocket Protection it's been said multiple times in this video that gold is used for more than just jewelry. It's got other properties that have made it valuable in a number of fields. This also includes rocket science, believe it or not. According to NASA engineers, a thin layer of gold leaf was used as the top layer of a thermal blanket used to cover the bottom of the module of the Apollo 11 rocket. The blanket was incredibly complex with 25 layers of material, which included glass, wool, captain, mylar, and aluminum. So, obviously, Obviously, it wasn't only gold, it was other materials as well, but the gold was still there. In fact, a thin layer of gold was also used in the visors of the astronauts as it would reflect infrared light that may have harmed them. Number 4. Italian Dentistry if you're looking for another creative use of gold, then look no further than 7th century BC over in Italy. And what did they do with gold? Well, they used it for dentistry. Specifically, it was used by people who valued wealth at all times and were willing to show it off even in their teeth. That's right, long before certain rappers had gold teeth, the ancient Italians had done it before them. So much so that they wouldn't only use it for things like crowns, but would actually make gold wires so that they could actually hold on to fake teeth. Talk about going above and beyond in order to have that perfect smile. Number 3. Gold Medicine? Well, this is not something that's done today, and equally as important, modern medicine does not seem to know why it was a practice for 70 years. So, I'll try to explain it the best I can. For more than 70 years, the standard treatment for rheumatoid arthritis was regular injections of a liquid suspension of gold, which acts as an anti-inflammatory. Apparently, though, there were people who were more than happy to get these injections and then proclaimed that they were in remission due to the process. Obviously, that's a problem because there is no cure for rheumatoid arthritis, and plus, there were severe side effects that could happen from you getting gold put into your veins. Gee, what a shocking development. It all goes to show you that sometimes even modern medicine isn't really the smartest thing. Number 2. First U.S. Gold if you recall Disney movies like Pocahontas, the English came to the New World both in search of a new place to colonize, but also for gold. They even sang about it in the movie. However, the first true finding of gold on American soil was just before 1800 on a farm in North Carolina. It was 1799 when a young Conrad Reed scooped up an unusual yellow rock near his family's farm at Little Meadow Creek. In fact, for three years, the glittery 17-pound oddity served as a doorstop at the Reed house. That's right, for real, they had gold nuggets as a doorstop. They just didn't know any better. Eventually, it would be taken to a jeweler, and then later on, they opened up their own gold mine on the property. Today, that 17-pound nugget would be worth well over $500,000. Number 1. Gold Thread if you need one final piece of proof about how thin that gold can be, you simply need to go to India. Because there, they make some very special outfits, and they don't use the most basic of materials. They actually use a metallic yarn that is comprised of both gold and silver. And to be clear, it's the 24 karat gold for these dresses and garments. These are straight up works of fashion art, and while the practice is dying in terms of them being handmade, they're still seen as a beautiful piece of clothing and even artwork. When done the proper way by hand, it can take months at a time to get them done, but the result simply cannot be denied, and you can absolutely say that they look golden. That's all from the realm of gold and all that it can do. What do you personally think of gold and all the things?